three more tips on things that could be sabotaging your fitness results. Once again, just integrating this as much as possible into your everyday life rather than setting aside time for like a full 30 to one hour workout. These are more lifestyle habit changes that we can do. Tip number one, food awareness. So nutritionists have one of the hardest jobs in the world. Think about it for one second, right? We, we hear all these different food um, evangelists, it seems like, almost like a religion. It's like, I'm a carnivore. I am keto. I am a vegan. And it doesn't make any sense when you really think about it because every single person looks different. Every single person's fingerprint is different. And so while there are some commonalities between us, a lot of us are different as well. So it would make sense that our nutritional needs, AKA what our gut biome is telling us we need, our organisms in our gut, our gut biome, that's gonna be slightly different across people. And then even within an individual, it's going to change as that person changes, as their activity level changes, as their sleep changes, as their stress levels change, as they age, as they their type of activity changes. So a lot of cardio versus a high weightlifting or strength resistance program. As my goals change, if I'm trying to run a marathon at a specific speed versus trying to put on mass, there's all these little elements that are going to affect our nutritional needs. And so based off of that, it's like, what do we do when there's a lot of different possibilities? Well, we develop a framework of self-awareness. So one, slow down. If you end up binging, slow down, give yourself grace. It's okay slow down, figure out what events throughout the day led to me losing in that moment. Because it wasn't in that moment that you lost the decision to binge versus not to binge, that you gave into the temptation. There was something else going on in your life throughout the day that caused you to binge there. So whether it's stress levels, anxiety levels, not having good hydration throughout the day, not having the necessary macro or micronutrients in my body causing abnormal cravings. So slow down, journal out your food for a couple weeks. So if you have a high propensity for an eating disorder, I'm not a nutritionist, but if, if you do have a high propensity for an eating disorder, you need to know yourself. So if, if you, you don't thrive on um, journaling out and you're a little bit OCD and that's gonna add more stress, then don't do it, right? However, for most people, journaling out, what did I have for breakfast? How many calories did I eat? Start to get aware of your portion sizes and, and your what are you actually putting into your body throughout the day. And then after each meal, how did I feel in the 30 minutes to the one hour afterwards? Did I feel tired or did I feel energized? Did I feel bloated? Did I feel anxious? Did I feel stressed? I should be feeling energized and happy after most meals. Um, that's going to change a little bit throughout the day, right? Because we are trying to, at breakfast and lunch, sustain energy, snacking, and then at night we are trying to wind down and go to bed, right? So even playing around with, okay, I can eat protein early in the morning, but it affects my sleep at night, or, or I can eat carbs early in the morning, but it affects my sleep at night. There are general rules, statistically speaking, but everybody is, again, different. So slow down, give yourself grace, and record your food intake, your hydration, your emotions and feelings after meals, and then your activity levels, what did you do and your stress levels on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis, and after a few weeks, you're gonna have a good rhythm set in and you're not gonna need that recording as much. You can record or you can use My Fitness Pal. I have no affiliation with them. I have no affiliation with, with anybody besides my own companies. Um, but MyFitnessPal has been a great way to track all of these different things. Also, another great company that I love is FirstForm. FirstForm app 
will also help you track these things, right? And so those are those are really good place to start. Do it, and then every year or every six months or every quarter, redo it again. You're constantly changing. Your goals are constantly changing. Your nutritional needs are going to constantly change. Next tip number two is your environment on a day-to-day basis. And yes, I do mean a little bit of do I live in a suburban era area versus a rural area that does play into that a little bit but what i really want to emphasize with this is the people around you do you have a team an accountability group of people they're going to hold you to the standard and they want you to succeed in this commitment to a healthier happier version of yourself a lot of times when you start down these these health journeys, it's so abnormal. 75% of Americans are considered overweight, 45% are considered obese, 33% are, are considered clinically depressed, 60% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. And so when you start to, to leave the pack, we've all heard of um, crabs in a bucket, but I won't, I won't go there, and it's not their fault. That's just the reality that they view the world through. That's the perception in the lens. And they think they're, they're helping you, but they're not, right? Being healthy, being happy, being energized, that, that is the truth and that is the way. And so, so many people are blinded to it. And what, what I want to say, though, is when you're trying to do that, a lot of people are like, what you doing? It's, it's, it's admittedly awkward to be that person at at birthday parties or at um, holiday parties or when you go out with your friends, you're the one that says, hey, I'm not going to drink as much as I usually do or I'm not going to drink at all. I'm not going to order all these appetizers and all these other meals. I'm going to watch what I eat, my portion sizes. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to be present with my food. I'm still going to engage in conversations, but I'm going I'm to shift some different habits around because it's important to me but that's really really hard if you're in a group of 10 people and you're the only one doing it the probability of you giving into the group is very high and i mean i've given into peer pressure all the time i still do all right but so you need to watch who you're surrounding yourself with what content are you feeding yourself are you watching this content that glorifies being overweight and eating unhealthy are you watching content feeding yourself conversations and content and people who are all about living and striving to do their best to live a healthier lifestyle. So watch that environment as well. Next is stress control, right? So do you, what are you doing on a day-to-day basis, week-to-week basis? So many of us have so many responsibilities. We have work obligations. We have family obligations. We want to be a good friend. We want to be a good child we want to be just a good community leader a good church leader good sports team leader good club participant we want we want to show up as the best version of ourselves in so many different facets and we're going to fall short of that um, a lot of times and so trying to slow down and be self-aware of what what are my stress levels and what is controllable and what is uncontrollable what is negotiable and what is non-negotiable and, and starting to prioritize, maybe cut some things and prioritize time by yourself. If you can, 15 to 20 minutes where you're just by yourself, meditating, praying, journaling, and then social time, getting around people that, that build you up, that feed into you. So many of us might be people pleasers or, and we're constantly giving ourselves to other people and then are we getting that returned and so those are low-hanging fruits and lifestyle changes that we can start to do is slow down be aware of our food and how it affects us slow down be aware of who we're surrounding ourselves with and the content we're feeding ourselves and is it reinforcing the new self or the self that i'm trying to build this healthier happier optimized version of myself and then finally Am I prioritizing my, my self-care? Am I prioritizing social time? Am I getting love poured back into me so that I can show up and be the best version of myself? And that's all going to affect your fitness results at the end 
of the day. Because when stress has a raises cortisol and it can affect cravings, it can affect metabolism, it can affect the storage of fat, it can affect your sleep, it can affect your energy levels. And so stress control and learning to modulate good stress and bad stress it's a super important skill. So I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, go ahead and please share it with your friends or hit the subscribe button. I'm always just trying to put out positive, loving content to the best of my ability so that we can do the best to maximize human flourishing across people, across time. Love you, human fam.